What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the same day we were where we actually moved into our new shop. We've still got the trailer here behind us as you can see and we are over at probably every automotive enthusiast's favorite store Harbor Freight. So we're here today to stock up on some of the quintessential utilities basically populate and get our shop up to kind of somebody's standard. I don't really know whose standard it is, but we need stuff in order to make it more usable than it is. One of the biggest reasons that we needed to move out of the old shop was just kind of room for activities and frolicking and filming and all that kind of stuff, but also because we ran out of space for tools, which kind of reduced our capability for what it is that we needed to get done. Well, today we're gonna take you guys along in our shopping spree into Harbor Freight, plus probably to a few other stores while we have this trailer attached to throw everything right in the back and get it back to the shop. Now, being that the US is currently going through a pandemic, we are gonna take our precautions kind of feels really weird to do this but I do have a pregnant wife at home and health is the overriding priority so we are going to be rocking masks and gloves just to be overly precautious I guess part of being a car guy is you always have face masks laying around these are N95 certified and these are the ones that you are supposed to use for the coronavirus so we're going to be rocking it out there's gold right here yeah these things are worth tons of money right now apparently but hey guys you know what it pays to be safe because you don't want to have to say sorry i think i look cooler with my face mask on because i have a hat do you have another hat in here i could borrow dude i gave you like five hats you never wear them though nobody can be getting the coronavirus yeah, it's definitely a weird time in America. There's no question of a doubt, but it is better to be safe than sorry and always to use precaution. We had these things laying around, so we figured, you know, we might as well use them and do our best. So the idea for today, ladies and gentlemen, is to head into Harbor Freight to pick up some of the essentials. We're not gonna buy like everything. I don't wanna spend like a ton of crazy money in the store, but I do wanna get some of the essentials, toolboxes, some additional hand tools, some larger hand tools that we can use and a nice Cummins. It's got the new 420Vs on it. Big old stack coming through the ton out cover. Nice third gen, I like it. And I'm also not gonna lie, that 2020 looks really solid with a black enclosed trailer. Don't tempt me with a good time. It's not like I need another trailer in my life. If people don't look at you weird for talking into a camera, they're definitely gonna look into, at you weird for Wearing having a mask. face mask on yeah. in public. Okay. But people do have gloves on, everyone's taking their precautions. So the first thing we came to look at are some toolboxes. Something like this would be cool, but I just don't see it being completely necessary. Like, all outlets. it's a charging drawer, yeah, yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, I feel like if I was like a mechanic or something like that, that's exactly what I'd want, because then I could like eat lunch in here and have my laptop and kind of do my own thing, but not really necessary. So I definitely want to pick up one of these carts. These are nice just for kind of like working on a project. You can kind of throw all your tools in it, have some of your essential sockets, all that kind of stuff. And that way, at least you have everything kind of semi organized Organized, rather than just taking tools and throwing them. You look pretty legit with that face mask on. What color do we do? Black? 15,000 cubic inches. I mean, I like white everything. White is nice. Personally, I'm going with orange. You going orange? Matches zero things in the shop. It's the way to go. Now I'm either black or white. I like white, shop. dude. I'm all about a white toolbox. I think if we're all greasy, it's all gonna be like... All right, well, let's see what other kind of box options we have. See, I feel like something like this is perfect, yeah. like awesome because I mean, it's big and it's probably gonna be a little bit expensive, but at least it has everything that we need. It actually has your little latches. It's like semi soft clothes. I wouldn't say it's like snap on. Everything rolls nice. Everything's ball bearing drawers, dual slider. Do all of our toolboxes match? Dude, we have to make a match. We have to make a Cause match. Cause like, so black it is. Yeah, my OCD, that would like yeah. just go nuts. We should definitely get one of these too for yeah. gloves on the side of the toolbox. All right, so they don't have any of those toolboxes in stock, but we actually just went ahead and ordered them and uh, we actually saved like over $300. At the end of this video or at the end of the shopping spree, I will tally up all of the totals just on kind of getting a shop equipped from the like the bare beginnings because that's kind of how I look like we're starting. We already bought the toolboxes and we became a Inside Track Club member for two years. Yes, so, yes. The fortress, it's ultra quiet. We actually do need a compressor for this shop. I'd like something that's on wheels, that way we can kind of move it around, that's nothing nice. crazy. That, it actually looks like pretty legit. I mean, it's like 400 bucks. I don't know how you go wrong with a compressor. It looks like this is a 110 too, which is nice. We are gonna have 220 in the new shop. Let's see here, compared to DeWalt, 549 bucks. I mean, I feel like for what we're gonna be using it for, how could you go wrong? Plus they have like ridiculous warranties at Harbor Freight. Sometimes I kind of wish YouTube was like live. So I could be like, guys, what do you think right now? Drop a comment below. We can continue to shop around and then come back. We'll think of this. All right, now Mark DeCola, you are gonna be so proud of me, dude. I've been putting off getting one of these Daytonas for the longest time, but today, brother, we are making it happen. Go ahead, Jake. <laughs> I was like, oh. It goes up to 400 PSI. I like where the fittings and everything are. It's yeah, like simple. So they have a 50 foot hose reel, which I'd want to grab and just mount it in one location. We have a 40 by 40 shop. Yeah, 
So 50 square foot should get us pretty much as far as we need to go within reach. So I like that idea there. So uh, to screw some sense in the Jake, we're gonna need to go with this one inch aluminum air wrench. I can tell you right now that ain't big enough. <laughs> oh man, the earthquake, dude. Let it rumble. I feel like this is way nicer than that one. Well, it comes with this thing. Nah, we'll go with that one. Air inlet size, 40. No, we need the female so. Yes, dude. That's the male, actually. My life is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just had the bird and the bees conversation. <laughs> All right, so upon further inspection. Upon further inspection here. 4.5 out of 5. That's yeah. actually not bad. 92%. Yeah. And, and all the bad ones are just like, it's too loud, it's too loud. So I think we should also switch that Daytona 3 four ton, ton with the 4 ton because not only is it more capable, but it's cheaper. Oh. <laughs> Black or green? The green's kind of cool. I like green. It's different. Different? Yeah. Yeah, green. Orange? Green. Let's do it. Green? Yep. Works well. Oh, yeah. So a lot of you guys were wondering like what kind of shop projects we're gonna be getting into. Oh, Let's just see. say one of those are gonna be necessary eventually, but we're not quite there yet. So that's not on today's trip. So we have this right now, but it's completely clapped out. So. Oh, turns out we just had a small stone under the tire. <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> Stay calm, everybody. <laughs> we do plan on putting a TV in the shop. I don't really know what size. That's 37 to 70 inch. I feel like that's probably plenty. We're not putting a 105 inch TV on the wall. Sorry to disappoint, dude. What the heck? Dang, they sell McGuire's at Harbor Freight. That's dope. Half inch. Yeah, half inch. <laughs> now, one thing I really wanted to pick up was some socket organizers. That way they clip in, keep everything nice and clean. But for 18 bucks, even at Harbor Freight, I feel like that's a little bit steep. I feel like I'm going to flex on Amazon, my resource on that one, to see if we can get them any cheaper. From a pressure washer perspective, we are going to be adding one to the fleet. I just don't think we're going to end up buying one here. I do have a few in mind, but I do want to go electric. That way we can run it inside with the door closed and we don't create any unpleasant fumes. But I do want to get something that does have a nice pack to the punch. That way we can get everything clean, especially like the undercarriages and everything, but we'll probably save that for another trip. Bad news guys, we're uh, running into some technical difficulties with our SD cards. Unfortunately, I don't know really what's happening right now. We have another SD card. We always keep one on reserve, but it's saying that it cannot read with our camera right now, which is a very nice camera setup, by the way. So I don't know why that's happening, but we couldn't ditch you guys and let you go halfway through our shopping spree here. So wanted to talk quickly about welding. I do want to kind of get into experimenting with welding. I wouldn't say that it's going to be a pretty sight when we get started, but I would like to buy something that's kind of like multi-process, multi-purpose. I don't really know all that much about welding now, but it is something that I want to have around the shop. That way, when we get to that point, we'll have capability. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna end up buying one at Harbor Freight. Maybe, I mean, we'll see. It's not like I have the dependency to kind of do it every single day, but it would be nice to have the capability. Down the road, we want to get into projects that would require more uh, customization if you catch my drift. All right, guys, we're getting to the end of our shopping spree here, but we are gonna grab one of these big ass fans. Hey guys, you can see my whole face again. Uh, these face masks, very effective, but very itchy to the mouth. And this kind of whole area, I feel like I want to itch my face super bad right now. But we're on the stop number two. Camera's still malfunctioning, so we're not going to get you guys as involved as I was hoping to. We are at Costco right now. Jake is Jake is loving that mask. I'm going to have to put mine on here in a minute. Uh, we got to run inside here. We got to grab some additional supplies. We'll review those right after we get out. Costco trip is successful. We left with a lot. Today was an expensive day. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We will tally everything up. Full transparency here. I don't want to talk about figures to rub them in because that always comes off wrong, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are genuinely curious and I was just as curious as all of you. Uh, we are utilizing the trailer a little bit here. We've got some racking, compressor, other stuff in there. We've got the bed of the trough somewhat full. We got to wait to drop the trailer off to get everything up in there. All necessary items though for the shop. We got to get everything kind of configured, drop the trailer off and all that stuff. We'll see you guys back at the shop. The next day. Welcome back to another day. We had to kind of postpone things because it was getting late. We got totally carried away and put in like a 12 hour day. Basically moving in here, going out and grabbing all this stuff from Harbor Freight and Costco. I consider it a very successful trip because we kind of got ourselves set up with what would be what I consider the fundamentals for pretty much any shop's 
space. We wanna have tools to be able to do things that we wanna do rather than just kind of have a space where we can put all, our, all of our stuff. Now, this is not a comprehensive look at everything that we purchased today that we will be talking about price here in a second uh, because we don't have our three toolboxes. So we bought that dual stacker toolbox combo, the US General one from Harbor Freight. And then we also bought kind of like a little hand cart that has some drawers and stuff like that. So it's gonna be really nice to kind of equip those things with all the hand tools that we have currently. I'm actually gonna take that toolbox and bring it back to my house because I don't have a workbench at my house. And uh, as you guys know, I am an enthusiast of a lot of different hobbies and I need a vice and some at-home tools just to kind of maintain those where I've been kind of, you know, skimping or just barely getting by for them. But anyway, guys, here's a total look at everything we bought. You pretty much saw everything at Harbor Freight. What we added to the collection from our trip to Costco was a few things. So we ended up picking up a 50 inch T TV that we are gonna end up putting somewhere in the shop. This swivel wall mount, so that way we can kind of pull it out. I do plan on putting some sort of a sound system in this unit. I wanna have a speaker in all four corners, so that way we have great sound. Big time music enthusiast here, so we gotta make sure we're killing out that dead space, not a fan of it. So we're gonna have that synced up with the sound system. Sound system hasn't been ordered yet. If you guys have any good recommendations for like an at-home unit that's like not crazy, because again, we are in a shop, but does have like Bluetooth capability, produces good sound, maybe a subwoofer, drop a comment below. Definitely willing to check that out. Make them affiliate links too, so maybe I can kind of get some kickback to you guys. We also ended up picking up two floodlight ring cameras. Those will be getting installed both inside and outside, and we'll probably end up getting more of those. But I like to have eyes on my prize, even when I'm not on the site. These are 72 inches wide, 70 inches high, and 24 inches deep. And they're going to go all across this wall right here and hopefully help us kind of organize this complete disaster. Eight ball burnouts, let's go boy. <laughs> Fortunately, we have another set of wheels and tires here, but they will be going to one of you, the winner of the 2016 Denali when you come to pick that truck up. Due to this lovely thing that's called the coronavirus here in the US right now, Harbor Freight's not sure when their next shipment of toolboxes will be coming in. So we could get a call right now uh, to a call in the next like week and a half as to when those are gonna come in. And then we're gonna start kind of the tool buying journey. Amazon's been a great resource for me to buy like impacts and swivel sockets and stuff along those lines. We definitely have to expand upon like wrenches and all that other good stuff. But we're kind of embracing every single step of the process. It is a fun one, guys. And the reason that I wanted to make this video right here is because I know a lot of you aspire to own a shop similar to this, maybe larger, maybe a little bit smaller, depending upon your needs. So I wanted to be fully transparent with all of you guys so that way you kind of have a general idea as to what it takes to outfit said dream shop because getting the actual shop built is truly only one small part of the battle because then you need to actually fill it on up, decorate it inside, do all the other stuff to make it like fully functioning. Now, obviously Harbor Freight isn't the absolute best, but like I said, this isn't something that's gonna be getting used every single day. It's gonna be used a good amount, but it's not gonna be used to that point where, you know, I'd wanna kind of invest in something, let's just say a little bit more name brand like Snap-on. I just personally can't justify that because I am not, you know, like a crazy tech to that capability or to that kind of commercial level. So everything that you see here behind us, including the toolboxes, take a guess, take a guess, take a guess. Everything that you guys see right here, envision those toolboxes, ran about $4,000, right? So we spent about $1,300 on tools at Harbor Freight and some of the miscellaneous stuff, compressor, jack, like those things are expensive. We ended up spending about $1,300 on the toolboxes themselves. Again, that's that double stacker unit, two separate toolboxes together, and then that rolling cart, we did get some really awesome discounts. We saved nearly $600 at Harbor Freight. And again, for us, that is absolutely awesome. Then we went to Costco. Those racks were $159 each. Those cameras were almost $300 each. I think they were like 200 and 50 bucks or something like that each, but there are hardwire units. They do have floodlight cams. They do have all that kind of stuff that I did want. Um, and then like miscellaneous stuff. I mean, the TV really wasn't even that expensive in the grand scheme of things. We bought like one of the cheapest ones that they had. But you know, this is kind of just like a general guide at getting just some of the basics to kind of make a shop usable. Now let's kind of keep in mind here that we didn't even jump into tools yet. Fortunately, I have a decent amount of stuff outfitted in my toolbox already that will get kind of like the bare minimum done. But I frequently run into situations where I don't have the right tool for the job. And then that doesn't only lead into kind of frustration, but it also adds more time to the project because you can't efficiently go about completing whatever it is that you got to do. You know, the right tool for the job is an age old adage for a reason, because if you have all the right tools for the job, you can get them done lickety split and some knowledge too which sometimes I lack. So anyway, I'm sorry about all the talking. We gotta get to work on organizing, guys. So let's jump into it.
Man, these coves are absolutely awesome. I love these things. They are literally the greatest addition to our entire shop. Jake's got one right over here. I got one right over here. No joke, guys. We have been bumping on the same charge since the last video where we introduced that to you guys. So if you haven't picked up your cove yet, it's a new cove commuter split. You can get 60 plus percent off with discount code DJ60. I'm gonna link that down in the description below just as a convenience for all of you guys. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to get y'all a quick update here. We're making great progress, as you can see. Still looks like a complete mess, but get used to it for a little while. While. I'm starting on a new project over here because I just got done pretty much assembling everything that you did see in the boxes. Jake has been working on assembling these shelves, which are awesome, by the way. These are from Costco. Like I said, 159 bucks each. They can support 1,500 pounds, you said, per shelf, which is honestly crazy. Like, I had to go back and check real quick because that just seemed a little unrealistic, but it's super dope because they're also connectable. So you can create separate shelves or you can link them together. We decided to do the latter so there's a little bit more structural integrity. We're gonna put those up against that wall and we've decided that we're actually gonna put all of our extra wheels and tires up on top of this rack. Now I'm actually starting on what's gonna be the detail corner. I can't get to it home yet because we actually are gonna be painting this wall. I think I've finally settled upon black. We doing black, Jake? I think black's the move. I think black's the move. I was a little bit reluctant about doing an all black wall, but we do have adequate lighting in here. Fortunately, it is extremely well lit in this space. So a black wall is not gonna shade us too much or be an inconvenience for filming and doing all the stuff that we love to do in these parts. So the painter is going to be coming tomorrow to kind of get that all squared away. But in the meantime, I'm kind of just stenciling out what I wanna do with our little detail corner here because we have this sick French drain that's all across our foundation in our first bay. So my thoughts are this. We're gonna do a rack from the old shop kind of tucked in this corner. There's our water source. I think we're gonna end up taking our hose, kind of mounting it kind of right in this general area, probably here or here. It's gonna drive me nuts. I mean, maybe we'll kind of put it right in the center just because I feel like that's off balance and that's off balance. My OCD is getting the best of me. And then we're gonna have our power washer that's actually from my house. I decided to just bring it over here because it's only gonna get really used over here, kind of in that corner as well. We're gonna stock that shelf with all of our detailing supplies, pretty much everything we would ever need. And then we'll have a really nice convenient little wash bay right here. Our pneumatics, our air supply, everything like that. I'm really not sure yet. You know, we've got our wall mount retractable hose. We've got the same for one of our extension cords right here. Uh, and then we just kind of have like our general stuff. All of that stuff's placement is going to be massively dictated by our new kind of work storage, our work boxes. That's okay. I mean, I guess it's a work box, but it's really a toolbox. I don't know why I said work box. What the it's a work box. But the toolboxes are gonna have a massive kind of contribution to where everything else goes. So only time will tell on those. I'm honestly hoping they come in soon. I don't want the shop to be in complete disarray for a long period of time, but we're making pretty good progress already. It feels already kind of like a little bit better. <laughs> Finally, guys, it's starting to take shape and starting to get a little bit organized. I feel like I can finally like frolic around the center of my shop without feeling completely congested as if the walls were closing in on me. Imagine those racks right here, black wall, wheels on top of the racks because they have the capability to do that. Maybe an additional rack depending and a nice and organized shop environment with stuff actually up on the walls. Everything on the ground kind of makes it feel a little bit claustrophobic. So we've got to bring Dream Music Giveaway number nine into the shop and we're going to be leaving eight ball here as well. Nice, Jake's about to pull it in here. That stock tune, man, it doesn't even know how much fuel it has right now. It is kind of confused. Sounds amazing though, sounds amazing, I can't lie. boys let's grab the giveaway truck and i'll tell you what two denali's one generation next to the other and i like the 2020 but i'll tell you what i love this body style it's just a complete classic and that paint reflection though oh my god dude we're talking like i mean this will be a thousand although not technical yet. Don't want to upset anybody because it's not technically a thousand yet, but it will be. And then we've got what? LML, I'd say, I can't remember what they were from the factory. 450 or something like that. This is Jake doing math. It was like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's a large number of horsepower. <laughs> Numbers. <laughs> all right, boys, we are packed up, ready to rock and roll out of here. So that's where we're gonna wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for your excitement, your enthusiasm and your support up until this point in time. I know that the shop stuff's a little bit different than kind of our 
general truck build genre of content, but I see that you guys are stoked about it and I'm equally as excited to bring you all along with this journey. The next time that you see the place, if I don't have the ability to film it, this wall should be a completely different color and we will get you guys back and involved as we kind of organize some of the organized chaos because that's kind of the state of which it's in right now. Stay tuned for the winner. We are getting very close. I should have that information pretty much any day at this point in time. The estimated winner announcement for this truck is April 9th to the 13th. So a little bit of a range there, but we are getting super close. And we've got Dream Diesel giveaway number 10 literally right around the corner. I'm kind of doing something just a little bit different this time around. So that being said, my like legal love you guys do your best. Tap that subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you all in the next upload. Give me a sign if you wanna go